Doctors of that era had no doubt that washing the whole body was very unhealthy. They categorically warned their patients against taking baths. Already in the second half of the 16th century, the inhabitants of Western Europe did not sin with cleanliness. Epidemics of plague, periodically striking the continent, led to the closure of public baths. In the privacy of the home, the use of a bathtub filled with water also became increasingly rare. Queen Elizabeth I, for example, took a bath only once a month, yet she claimed to bathe whether it was necessary or not. Compared with the monarchs of the following century, she could be considered a real cleaner. Elizabeth's successor, James I, allegedly only washed his fingers. The French King Henry IV 1553 to 1610 was notorious for the odor he spread, his illegitimate son Louis XIII similarly. The latter, moreover, boasted I am like my father, I smell of sweat. In contrast, another monarch, Louis XIV, boasted that he had bathed three times in his long life. As a result, he was surrounded by a monstrous stench that not even liters of spilled perfume could conceal. The stench was so strong that the Russian ambassador reported in one of his letters to the Tsar that the Sun King stank like a wild beast. The French writer and philosopher Michel de Montaigne, writing in the second half of the 16th century, lamented the state of hygiene of his countrymen, writing on the whole, I consider daily washing to be beneficial to health. I think we would do great harm to our health if we gave up this habit. It is difficult for me to imagine that we have any benefit from walking around with our dicks covered or our pores clogged with a layer of dirt. The medical authorities of the day still insisted on the medieval view that closed pores protect the body from freezing air. And this lurked everywhere in 16th and 17th century Europe, shaken by regularly recurring outbreaks. The doctors of the time had no doubt that washing the whole body was extremely unhealthy. In the mid-17th century Theophrastus Renato warned that bathing, except when it is absolutely medically necessary, is not only unnecessary but unhealthy. It was thought to be because the head is filled with vapors. It is an enemy to the nerves and ligaments, which the vapors relax to such an extent that one who has never suffered from lumbago will know it by taking a bath. Following medical advice, the residents of 17th century Western Europe almost completely abandoned bathing. In addition to a cursory hand wash, the mouth was also rinsed quickly and the face was wiped with a dry rag. Instead of washing hair, bran or powder was rubbed into it in the evening and removed with a comb in the morning. Widespread aversion to water in the 17th century, a change of linen ceased to be a substitute for bathing and became something better, safer, more reliable and scientifically sound than it. Another quoted by Georges Vigorello in his History of Cleanliness and Dirt argued categorically that white linen, by cleansing the body, dilutes it and causes secretions and fatty substances to escape more easily by entering it. This approach was reflected in the construction industry as well. For example, the famous Parisian architect Louis Savat, in his designs of castles and palaces based on ancient models, prudently refrained from including bathrooms, stating we can do much better without them than the ancients, thanks to the use of the undergarments we have now, which serve to keep our bodies clean in a much more convenient way than could be done in the baths and bathing places of the ancients, where it was not possible or convenient to wear undergarments.